how do I make particles collide in my levels? Here inside this level, you can see we have a particle emitter, and by default, uh, your particles are just going to fall right down through the floor of your level, which is what they're doing here. So what I'm going to do is pop into Cascade. I'm going to right-click here inside my module list, and we'll come down to Collision, and add a Collision module. Now even with just that, if we uh, minimize Cascade and take a look, if you look really close, some of the particles actually appear to stop moving uh, right before they die, and if we move the camera down underneath the level, we're no longer falling through. Now what I'm going to do is give you a quick overview of some of the properties within the collision module. First off, we have damping factor. This allows you to control how much of the energy or motion that the particles will retain upon collision. By default, this is set to a min and max value of zero, so our particles just hit the ground and completely stop moving. If we set this to ones down the board for min and max, then what's going to happen is all of the energy that the particles have when they hit the ground, they're going to retain when they, uh, when they bounce back off. So if we take a look here, they're actually bouncing all the way back uh, up to the elevation that they were when they started falling. Now that's not very realistic, but it does illustrate the point. Realistically, you'd probably want this to be a much lower range. Let's just pick on something like 0.5. Uh, all the way down for max, and then 0.2 all the way down for min. And there you go. The, the bounce is actually decreasing. Okay, now scrolling down from here, we have uh, damping factor rotation. This is the exact same principle, but applied to rotation, which we don't really have rotating particles, so it doesn't matter. But you can cause the amount of rotation to steadily decrease as your bounces continue. Underneath this, you have a max collision value. By default, this is a uniform distribution, so you have a min and a max. This means every single particle is going to be allowed to bounce a random number of times between these two numbers. So let's set this to maybe uh, 3 for min and 5 for max. This means every single particle will be assigned a random number of bounces that it can have between 3 and 5. So uh, if we jump back over to the level, boom. So uh, at, at some point, as soon as uh, the particles get done with their set number of bounces, they're currently dying off. So let's scroll down a little bit. The next thing we have is collision completion option. What do you want the particles to do when they have hit their max number of bounces? Now, the default setting here is kill. This just means once the particles have bounced all they're going to, go ahead and just kill them out. You can freeze them, and what this will do is stop all calculations. So currently, I actually have particles that fade out over their lifespan, but if we take a look here, the particles are actually popping out of existence, so they kind of hit the ground, sit still for a moment, and at the end of their lifespans, they wink out. That's because freeze actually stops everything. It stops motion, it stops rotation, and it stops any internal calculation that's driven by the particle's lifespan. Now, in uh, kind of an alternate to that, if we scroll all the way down to freeze movement, this does the same thing in that it stops the particles from moving or rotating, but it still allows internal uh, calculations based off lifespan. So if we pop back over to our level, our particles, if we get right up close and look, are actually fading away after they stop moving as opposed to winking out of existence. So those internal calculations are taking place. Now, aside from those, we can just freeze translation or just freeze rotation, which I'm not going to demonstrate because it's kind of clear what they would do. One would just stop your particles from moving, but it would still allow rotation and uh, any internal life-based calculations to take place. The other would just stop rotation, but you still allow the particles to move and have those internal calculations. We'll just set this to freeze movement for now. You have B, apply physics. This will allow your particles to move rigid bodies around your level, uh, which is pretty intensive, but it can be done. We're not going to demo it here. Uh, pawns do not decrement count. When this is active, if a uh, particle strikes a pawn like a player, it will bounce off of them, but it's not going to count that in your, uh, in your actual bounce count. Only vertical normals decrement. This would mean that uh, really it's only going to count if it hits a floor instead of a wall. And then B, drop detail. Uh, essentially, just kind of keeping this simple, this means that if your level needs to, it's going to ignore uh, the whole collision thing if, you're, uh, if your level's getting a little too slow. Now, underneath this, we have particle mass. This is only valuable if you've switched on physics up above. And then you have your vertical fudge factor. What this is going to kind of allow you to do is control 
kind of a range at which a vertical surface must be completely flat. So if this was set to zero, then it would only count those bounces that hit on a completely flat surface. As you increase the fudge factor, it allows a little bit of an angle to take place, and it still counts that in your bounce count. And then uh, finally, you have a delay amount, which is just going to uh, delay the uh, the amount of the, the collision. So that's a quick look at making particles collide, and that wraps up this How Do I video.